Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday live stream. So we've got a lot of things to cover, so let's just jump right in. First of all, if you haven't watched the NFA live show, it was with uh, me and Ben from Into the Cryptoverse and Jessica from uh, Coin Bureau. Go check it out over on uh, Ben's website, links in the description. It was a pretty good discussion. We talked about uh, uh, Ben and his meme coins and his altcoins that he's uh, degening in. I'm just kidding. We talked uh, about a lot of different things that were going on, especially that has to do with uh, there's a KuCoin issue that's uh, been happening. It looks like they're being sued by the Department of Justice. And we took a look at the four-year cycles. And then we also took a look at the halving, what things were going on. So it was a great show. So check that out. But today, what I'd like to talk to you about is there was a quick interview. This is on Fox Business. This was yesterday. And it was Larry Fink. And I, I was surprised to hear what he had to say, especially with just how things were going with, with Bitcoin. And it's only about a minute long, so I just want to have you take a listen. And we're going to dissect about what he talks about. So just take a listen to this again, about uh, 60 seconds or so. Come right back. I, I'm very bullish um, on the long-term viability of Bitcoin. I was going to say, did that surprise that you? That surprised me how much that's really? gone up. I mean, look, at it, it, it is, we, we're creating now a market that has more liquidity, more transparency. And I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised, and I would never have predicted it before we filed it, that we were going to see this type of retail demand. So you thought you'd do good, yeah. but not this good. I thought... Yes. yes. Well, iBit, <laughs> is, iBit is your ETF yes. over at iShares. Yes. It's about to overtake Grayscale, which was in the business uh, certainly a lot longer. You look at the gains since January 11th when it first came about. Yes. Have you ever seen this much inflow this quickly into uh, iBit is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. I, I, That's all I got to know right there. ITF is the fastest growing ETF in the history of ETFs. And I think it's interesting that uh, Larry Fink and BlackRock, all the different studies that they did and all the information that they acquired and did their, do, their due diligence to come into the spot Bitcoin ETF market, and just how blown away they actually were by their response. And I think this will be part of the narrative moving forward because we've got some pretty big narratives coming up. We have a Bitcoin halving, which is uh, uh, roughly uh, April 19th or April 20th. Then of course, we can also piggyback on top of this with what's going on as far as ETF. So I think there's something to be said about that. And when she said, I, the, uh, the, the co-host uh, on Fox Business, she said, have you ever seen something like this from the beginning in January 11th? And I was actually shocked myself. I took a look at this and I it's, it's so hard to remember just how far we've come in such a short amount of time. On January 11th, when this whole thing started, when we got excited about it towards the end of December, Remember, Bitcoin was at 46,000. I think it's good to keep perspective on this, especially with as we see just how far the price rockets up. And look at this. It's essentially like a rocket ship. So if you're in traditional finance, you go from one, you know, one piece for 46,000, and it doesn't double, but it darn near does double up to a high of over $73,000 in roughly two months. That's an amazing rocket ship. I think that's what uh, people will be talking about moving forward, especially in the traditional finance space. And then also, one more thing to take into consideration is that the reason why we still haven't really taken off is, well, unfortunately, because we have this thing called grayscale. And this is from heyapollo.com. It takes a look at the Bitcoin ETFs. And see this light blue right here? This light blue is grayscale Bitcoin. And what they've been doing is essentially dumping on or just getting out of uh, their positions on, on grayscale, whether that be because of um, uh, FTX and they have to sell off or different creditors have to sell off to pay back uh, debtors. But you can see that in the beginning, it was 617,000 Bitcoin that they controlled. And then as time went on, of course, the different, the ARC, the fidelities, they kind of eat into it to where right now, uh, in light green is iBit. That's BlackRock. They have 250,000 Bitcoin in their, under their management right now. Of course, people have bought that. And you can see over here in Grayscale, 335. So again, it went from 619 to 335. Now it's not exactly half, but it's quite a long way. And we can see that uh, just on uh, March 27th, which today is the 28th. Yesterday, we had a Grayscale outflow of 4370 and, an, and a, uh, a BlackRock inflow of 4,700. So I think this is moving in the right direction. So we'll see how it all plays out. And then before we we move on, I was just, 
monitoring the chats. I don't know if this is 100% correct, but it looks like SPF may have gotten a 25 year prison sentence. Now we had talked about this on MFA Live. I'm not sure if this has actually come in or if this is uh, reality, but we'll uh, follow up with this. And that, if that is true, that uh, Sam got 25 years, quite a number, but we'll see how long it takes and if that's actually a uh, reality or a truth and uh, how much he gets for good behavior. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. But there's one thing, if we're talking about Bitcoin and how things are moving forward, I find it fascinating. And this was shared with me on uh, X on the L2s. And this is not L2s for Ethereum. This isn't layer twos for Ethereum. This isn't roll up ZK, roll up side chains, spider chains. This is L2s currently that are offered or are in development on Bitcoin. And one of the biggest ones, if we scroll down here, would be Stacks. And Stacks right here, they, they label it as an anchored, anchored chain. And there's a different mass amount of plethora of different uh, types of L2s that we can have for Bitcoin. But I think this is one of the futures for Bitcoin. Look at this. This is over 30 different projects. I think it's over 40 different projects that are being built right now. So I know we talk about the narratives. The narratives, of course, are DPIN, artificial intelligence, Web3, DEXs. And I think one of these narratives that nobody's talking about right now, which I think is quite odd, is these L2s, which are uh, coming forth and could be built on top of Bitcoin, which is the the most secure layer that we have backed by computational power electricity and of course all the node operators across the world and the bitcoin mining operation so when i take a look at this i'm like this could be a very big play and uh if you know just going back to what larry said he said he's very bullish on bitcoin i think it could get even crazier with these l2s there is a uh, project, as a matter of fact, we're going to review over on Dan DJ, and it's called Velar, Velar, or Velar. I always say names wrong, but uh, whatever else. But it's a DEX that's going to be built on top of Bitcoin using the Stacks protocol. And Stacks has been around for years. So I'll put that out. This will be on our second channel over on Dan DJ. Again, second channel, Dan DJ. More risky stuff. So if you want to like be a more of a gambler, go over there. I'll just uh, just state it that uh, this is where you could do okay or you could lose everything. One of those two things happen. So take it with a grain of salt, but uh, the last uh, couple of projects we've done has been pretty good. We just talked about Aether, as a matter of fact, and uh, the big one, Minutes Network. And uh, Aether is a uh, AI GP, uh, excuse me, AI and DPIN project. And then uh, also Minutes Network, which is also in partnership with uh, World Mobile Token. They are a... Uh, a deep in telecommunications project. So check those out. Links are in the description for that. And then uh, also things move so fast in the crypto space. Uh, Aether, again, is, is essentially decentralization of GPU cloud service for compute or computational resources for artificial intelligence. And they just signed a major deal with Gaiman, which essentially they just put on 50,000 more gamer grade GPUs on top of their... 400 uh, XYZ of H100s, <laughs> XYZ, of H100s, which are the big guns for the processing units uh, from NVIDIA. Anyhow, those links in the description, you can do your own research on that, but I think that uh, is a pretty big narrative on top of Web3. And uh, Web3, I sat down uh, with Kieran, who's uh, one of the co-founders of uh, Alluvium, and we talked about... It's, it's a pretty interesting story because their their game Overworld is actually, you can play that right now. And then I believe Beyond is out now. And then Early Access is Zero and Arena. And this project has been around since 2020 when they first started. And you can see that in 2021. This is why I say like everything will do well in, in the bull market. At the peak of the bull market, this was heavily overvalued at almost 2,000 per token. This is on November 30th, 2021. Good times, good times. They didn't have a game out yet. And really they just had like, hey, this might happen. Let's see what, it, let's see, let's roll the dice. And everybody did. And this is just kind of the lunacy that goes on in the bull market. But during that time, you said that the uh, the price went down because there was no product, right? Then they rolled out some things in beta and things are burn, doing pretty well. And I've always said, pay attention to the projects that build in the bear because they will crush it in the bull. And look at these prices. 
down because there wasn't anything else. Then things came out. They had uh, one of their different games that were out. And now in Q2, which essentially is April, May, and June, all four of these games will be released. Overworld's already out. Beyond's out. Zero and Arena are actually going to production. And it's an interesting concept what they have with this one. They're able to, the token that you have, you're going to be able to stake those tokens and receive revenue that are collected throughout the game. So what I did, again, I sat down with uh, Kieran and uh, we had a discussion uh, about what's actually uh, happening. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to play it right now. It's about 10 minutes and then we'll come back and we'll do a little Q&A and go from there. So just uh, take a listen. Everybody, what I want to do is uh, just give an update to what's happening with the Luvium monstrous game. And I wanted to bring somebody that could give, uh, really shed some light. So uh, Kieran, welcome to the show for the second time. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Rob. Appreciate it. Yeah, man. So you know how long, it's been like five months. It's been five months since we first came in. You graciously stayed up till midnight over there in Sydney, Australia, as I was lounging around my pool, my pool house. So I want to say I returned the favor. Now we're here in the nighttime here in Puerto Rico. We had Grant on and uh, he gave us some, some great alpha. So just talk to us real quick about what the heck is happening with Alluvium coming up. Yeah, so it's uh, it's really, really exciting for us at the moment. So uh, all three games that we've been building, Alluvium, Overworld, Zero and Arena are... Yeah. Uh, going onto mainnet, which means it's the first time that people will actually be able to earn from our games. It's the first time that you'll be able to uh, generate assets. And uh, it's it's really the moment that everyone in our community and even, even further in, in other gaming communities have been waiting for. Right. Where uh, a proper AAA game is uh, is going live on mainnet, but not just one, all three at the same time. Yeah, that's crazy. So like right now you guys have, you have Alluvium Beyond, which is what we were just taking a look at right now. Is that correct? This is the one right no, that's, now. That's Overworld. And so, Overworld. yeah. Yeah, so I, I think it's, it's important to clarify. We, over the last couple of years, we've been putting out a whole bunch of betas across uh, all three games, right? So you can play Arena, you can play Zero, you can play Overworld, but they're not production builds, if if that makes sense. And so okay. uh, before we go live, everything will reset. And so you, everyone starts at the exact same point. And, mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, that's that's why it's, it's such a big deal because it's the first time that you'll ever be able to start actually uh, earning inside of our games. Great. So, and this is all going to happen this Q2 we're, we're taking a look at. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Q2. So in the next, what, three and a little bit months. <laughs> That's crazy. This has been, this has been a long time coming. How long, remind me, how long has it been? How many years have you guys been working towards this goal? So we, the concept, I was actually looking at some old texts that I was sending uh, Aaron back in the day. And it was like uh, September 2020. Holy smokes. Yeah. So a long, long time ago. Yeah. But you know, what's great about it? Everything, everything hits right now. And like, this is like the, like I always, we talk about this on the channel. We're in the right place at the right time, especially right here. We're about to go through a having everybody starts to understand about web three gaming. It's not the cash grab that it was back in the day. Now it's actually legitimate, yeah. really good games built by really good people rolling them out. And that's, I think is, is the most exciting because like, People right now, I don't think they realize just how lucky they actually are. This is the time to be in in Web3. My, my personal opinion, I could be wrong, though. Yeah, no, I, I tend to agree. The The way that it's worked out is uh, is really lucky in, in terms of timing. I think uh, the bull run has just started. The uh, the harvesting, as you say, is, is around the corner next month. And so it's probably going to work out that we're launching right at perfect uh perfect time but we did we didn't plan that it just you know the, the scope yeah we were, we were trying to launch in the in the hysteria of uh of last bull run or, or at least get the 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 end of it but when you're building something 
as large as what we are that has the the scale and three games simultaneously and and yeah. a bunch of other DeFi applications that mm. bolt on top of it like our staking and stuff like that it just it takes a long time yeah well that would lead us to, to the next thing because this is why this is one of the reasons why i brought you on because the staking aspect we all know about staking about okay you throw in some coins you get some apy three months, six months, 12 months, two years, whatever you want to do. But your guys are just different. What you're doing, it sounds like, is that you're staking the Alluvium token. And then from the revenue that is generated from the different games that are out there, that is going to flow back into the stakers. Is that how it's working? Yeah. So it's this mm. crazy concept that we came up with, again, feels like 20 years ago. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, right, right when we were building our tokenomics, we wanted to do something different. And... Uh, particularly when it came to like gaming in general, right? Like there's this overarching uh, rule where it, it feels like the developers, uh, they have ungodly powers, right? They can do whatever they want. And that comes down to game design des decisions. It comes down to the revenue that they generate. They can just keep it. They can do whatever they want, right? And we wanted to fully decentralize a gaming studio. And so we mm. do that with uh, new decisions that we make and new games that we want to build. But then we also wanted to decentralize the uh, finance aspect of it. And so uh, we built this, uh, this mechanism where all of the in-game revenues that we have, mm. so from Zero, from Arena, from Overworld, they go into a vault and periodically that vault will trigger. There's some parameters around like when that vault can actually trigger, but yeah, it, will right. randomly, it will randomly trigger and we will buy ILV back off the market. And so, Got it. so what we're doing with that ILV then is we're uh, distributing it to all of the people that are staked in the protocol mm -hmm. based on uh, the time that you've staked and the amount that you've staked. And so, yeah, what, what we're hoping for there is that uh, you're going to get this ILV and maybe it's it's fully unlocked what you're receiving there. So we think that there's going to be uh, some portion that gets sold immediately and some portion which people restake because they're like, okay, the next time that these guys go and buy back off the market i want a larger portion so i can you know continually compound that and so yeah it's a it's a pretty crazy concept and if if the market goes back to what it was when axie infinity was generating the crazy crazy revenues that they were mm -hmm. we've done some modeling on what this would look like to uh, our token price and it's it's just utterly, utterly insane, right? Like the, that, that amount of buybacks of a token is just, it's unheard of. So that sounds, okay, that sounds great. I like where that is going. How complex is that? Like right now, like, why don't you walk me through how that works as far as like the stake? I think that that would really help everybody at home because we actually give them like, like real value here. So let's do this. I know it's somewhere here. We're on this website, we're on Alluvium. Dot io right yeah so I if you go top left uh -huh. yeah click that one go to staking alluvium dow yep okay and next net well yeah so this is your dashboard so this will show you the emission schedule uh we're, we're nearly at the end of that so there's only seven more epochs to go it'll show you uh our token price how many holders there are how much uh mm -hmm. ilv is actually staked it will give you uh the distribution of uh both pools because you can either stake just pure pure ilv or you can mm -hmm. stake in the uh, ilv slash eth pool and so this gives you a nice uh, layout of what's going on but if you want to stake, you go to the third tab there on staking. Uh -huh. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I'll use the my least favorite wallet of all time, MetaMask. No worries. So, all right. So I connect to my wallet. What's next? 
Yep. So now you've got your breakdown of two pools. You've uh -huh. got uh, the total value locked in in each, and the APY is there. Obviously, yeah. the ILV ETH pool has a lot higher uh, APY, but let's just keep it simple and uh, and stake in the ILV pool because they they both get the same amount of revenue distributions. Okay. So we'll click on stake. Before you continue, versus approve your wallet, approve. And of course, now you at home, you might see this, you might not, because this is MetaMask and they'd like to shield things, but it's gonna ask you to a custom spending cap. You're gonna click on next and you're gonna approve that. And approving ILV spend, view on Explorer, we'll wait. That is pretty easy, Kieran, I gotta tell you. It sounds very complex, but it's like six or seven clicks, really. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know if you can see that transaction 102 confirmed. All right. Okay. So we approved this one. Approved. So now if you go stake. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. Let's do, so, I'll do 75%. Okay. And now your duration. So uh, depending on how much, uh, how long you stake for, that's going to give you uh, up to a 2x multiplier. So if you do uh, the full 12 months, you're going to mm -hmm. get. 2x if you do six months you're going to get a 1.5x all right i'll do ah, i do 12 months i i think i think this bull one's gonna be nice let's see steak okay and then of course now you can't see this as well there's going to be something that's going to come up from metamask ask me to confirm this transaction uh fees well of course it's ethereum what are you going to do uh roughly uh not too bad seven dollars for for ethereum i'm feeling pretty great it's why it's late <laughs> we did uh, <clears throat> we did update our staking application to go to V2, which saved about I would say like two hundred percent on nice. our gas fees. It was it was pretty crazy in the beginning. In the bull run last uh, like two and a half years ago, people were it was costing them like five hundred bucks just to accept their rewards. It was just crazy. Hey, so remind me. Well, let's just talk about this now before we get we, we finish this up. Is there any plans for doing anything as like layer twos or something like that? Because we know what's happening here with, with layer one ERC 20s. Anything happening in the background? So we're building on top of immutable. So all of these all right. transaction costs won't exist for the user in game. Our, <clears throat> our DeFi stuff which includes staking which you know as this rolls out and these revenues start coming in a big part of what investors are going to want to do is jump in and start uh accepting their revenue distributions if you look right. down the bottom left it says rev dis claimed so yeah. you'll be able to you'll see that as you start claiming your distribution which is on the right and so, and as you can see, you've already started earning some ILV on the left there. Nice. And so uh, as people claim, we feel like we're gonna need to move uh, our V3 to a layer two as well. And so, uh, yes, that, there's definitely plans there because it's not great to be claiming and it costing you, you know, 15 bucks or whatever. It's, it's not mm. a good experience. I gotta agree. And that's right now. We know what's gonna happen in the next bull run, so. Gotcha. Exactly. All right. So, Kieran, that was good. You gave us an update. You showed us how to stake. I got to appreciate it. So, everybody at home, if you're looking for the information we just talked about, there's going to be links in the description for everything. Uh, Kieran, any last words of wisdom for the people coming in in the next uh, run here? Uh, I would just say get for, uh, for the people that are hunting around uh, different airdrops, we have a very, very large airdrop that's coming. It's going to start in our test net so yeah. there'll be uh, prior to us going live on mainnet there'll be a bunch of testing that we're doing and uh the airdrop will extend to that testing period and then it will move into uh production as well and yeah i haven't announced uh, how much it's going to be but it's very 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 big so uh definitely your listeners should uh should participate in that Time to start playing. Cool. Kieran, exactly. I appreciate it, man. Thanks so much, everybody. Let's jump back. Yeah, so that was good. So Kieran, again, thanks for stopping by. And uh, that was, I mean, that's great. I like to hear the new things that are going on with these projects that 
again, they built in the bear so they can crush it right now in the bowl. They have all four games coming in Q2. They've got their staking locked in. And of course, and Kieran just talked about it, is they have a, a pretty massive airdrop happening. All you gotta do is play the game, which is great. I'm personally just going to have my grandson do it and then he'll play it and then we'll split the split the we'll split the costs. That's called child labor. What are you gonna do? Anyhow. That's uh, that's it for today. Uh, there is one more piece of information I would like to bring to everybody's attention, and this just broke as we were doing the interview or the recording, which was uh, looks like SPF did definitely get sentenced to 25 years in prison for massive crypto fraud. And I got to tell you, I've mixed emotions about this because you know SPF. I mean, let's be honest, he wasn't like uh, the business genius and uh, obviously did illegal things. But, um, you know, if you take a look at 25 years for that type of fraud, it's, it, it is something. I mean, look at uh, Albright from, from Silk Road. He has a double life sentence for essentially putting up a website that allowed people to trade things back and forth. I'm not going to get into details, but I mean, come on, two life sentences for that and this guy gets 25 years? Who's the bigger criminal? Just saying. And here's what we have, so everybody can uh, be up and aware. So the sentence in Manhattan federal court was significantly less than the 40 to 50 years in prison that, prison that the federal prosecutors wanted. So they wanted 40 to 50, they got 25. It's a pretty good, that's a pretty good for them. That's a win. And much more than the five to six and a half years that his lawyers had suggested. That's what I had heard before, that his lawyers said, look, give him five to six years. We paid off everything you know, for all the FTX creditors. Now, they got back what they were, what crypto that they had, but it was in the uh, 2022 uh, price range of when FTX collapsed. So it wasn't actually they got everything back. They actually lost out a lot, especially with this born. They just would have held, you know, it, and they actually had the crypto. It have been a lot different story, but it is what it is. They did get their crypto back or in kind. I'm not for sure if it was in cash. I always forget this. Correct me in the comment section. But uh, people did receive some of their funds back. That is for sure. And uh, this is what Sam said in prison or in, in during the sentencing. And I have to, you know, at least he stood up and said, yeah, I did this. He states, they built something beautiful. And I threw it all that away. He said of his coworkers, it haunts me every day. It's been excruciating to watch this all unfold. He told Judge Kaplan, customers don't deserve this level of pain. I was a CEO of FTX and I was responsible. How many people actually say that these days? How many people say that I'm responsible? Nobody. I'm not giving Sam a pass, but I'm just saying no one, no one says that anymore. Judge Kaplan increased the sentencing guidelines range for Bankman to a max of 110 years. So he could have got 110, but he got 25. And who knows what he gets off if, uh, for good behavior and for parole. I don't know those specifics, but uh, this could be happening. 110 years in prison after finding that he had perjured himself at his trial and knowingly obstructed justice. I believe he uh, reached out to somebody to kind of stifle information. The judge also found Thursday the total loss of the fraud at FCX exceeded 550 million. Judge Kaplan said he rejects the entirety of defendant's argument that there was no loss at FTX, calling that claim misleading, logically flawed, and speculative. That sounds like the entire crypto market almost. Anyhow. So that's what we have, 25 years, and that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive, especially as we go into the bull run. Justice may have been served today, but we'll talk about it in Q&A. So let's jump into it. Q&A or take off. Thanks so much for stopping by. All right. Jeff says, appreciate your energy. It's infectious. Today's just a good day. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of things, so, you know, looks like Thursdays are my, are my good days. Yeah, Remrick says, yeah, the, Sil the Silk Road guy put out a hit on somebody. Maybe, who knows? And that's why I say like, you know, there's different nuances to every case. I had heard that as well. I don't know if it was actually proven or if that was just brought forth by the government. I'm not for sure, but two life sentences seems kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Geo says, free Sam. I'm not saying that. And... There's repercussions for every actions, and that's just how it goes. <laughs> More monkey businesses. Trump will come in and pardon him. No, he will not. There is 
no connection between uh, Trump and Sam Bankman Fried that I know of. The only, the only, the only connection that I know of is uh, Sam and uh, Gary Gensler, and everybody loves him. So yeah, let's see. This is a good question. Jason Paloa says, are the politicians giving the money back that SBF donated to them? It's a great question. You know, it's a funny thing because like, uh, I just read an article that Celsius is trying to claw back some of the funds that people had, uh, had taken off the platform within a certain amount of time. I want to say it's like a week to two weeks, trying to claw those back. But yet with the politicians, don't hear too much about those. And he, he donated a ton of money to a lot of different politicians. Now, those were on both sides, to be fair, Democrats and Republicans. So when everybody says this politician's good, that politician's good, they're all liars. And uh, you can't convince me otherwise. They're all awful. Let's see. Oh, Doug says, watch your Aether video last night. Very nice breakdown. Thank you. I'll be keeping an eye on it for sure. Yeah, I mean, Aether and the GPU AI play is going to be big. Full, full transparency, I'm investing into it, just so everybody knows. I mean, I don't see the point of talking about anything on either of my channels if I don't invest into it, have, have skin in the game. But yeah, uh, we'll see how it all works out. I uh, try to get on as a node operator, but uh, <laughs> not in America. Thanks, Gary. JH says, Rob, do you own MicroStrategy? I do not, but apparently it's uh, done uh, massively well over the last three or four months. Maybe Wall Street forks are going short on it and could be a great setup for a glorious short squeeze, perhaps. Um, yeah, I had saw that in the chats that there was a uh, opportunity, is uh, there's a pullback on price, but we'll see. You know, Jessica from Coin Bureau today had a really good point. We were talking about the gold company that's investing into Bitcoin and dumping millions into it. And uh, she had said that, yeah, if you take a look at their stock price, it actually uh, increased by over a thousand percent once that was, uh, I want to say that's what she said. Go watch the NFA live show. But she said it was a, it was a vast increase for their stock price of this gold mining operation and uh, how interesting it was and right timing that they haven't done anything. But uh, she did say that the CEO had stepped down and talked about a pump and dump. So interesting times. In that case, let's see. Ed says, we need a poll for who will fill in for Ben the next week. Yeah, Ben's going to be on vacation. So next week will be on this channel. And uh, I think it'll be uh, me, Jessica, and Nick, from also from Coin Bureau. We'll see. Yeah. Jeff says, with Sam's sentencing, I wonder how many years our good friend Alex Mashinsky will get. I don't know. But did you guys know that Alex Mashinsky is out walking free right now? Posted bail. No problems. Not a care in the world. Just watching the world burn. Former CEO of Celsius. Essentially a Ponzi scheme towards the end. Walking free. Amazing. We'll see if justice gets served there. I hate that guy. Guy was on my show like three or four times, light right to my face. Actually, I can't say that. Because in the beginning, it actually was a valuable company. It actually did what it was supposed to do. It's got over their skis. They did some, made some bad decisions, and that's how it is, which will lead me to a point, which is this. All the different projects that you have invested into, just remember that as good as they are, with as good as the promises that they are, that they have, doesn't mean that they'll make it. There are so many companies that just don't make it, and crypto is no different. So don't, like Ben talks about, don't marry an alt, because it really comes down to partnerships, execution, and of course, the roadmap and where they can actually fulfill it and actually make things work doesn't always happen. That's just how it is. You have the best intentions. Sometimes they just screw up. Ah, huh. Dirty Dan says, Rob, nothing to do with crypto. I work at a hospital. I'm dealing with KCI. KCI is a um, company I used to work for. It's a wound vac company. If you ever like, not to get disgusting, but if you have like a massive wound or if you got a gunshot wound or some kind of surgery goes wrong, we insert a... Uh, <laughs> Hey, medical grade hydrophobic sponge into that wound, cover out with plastic and connect to this machine. It suctions out, makes granulation tissue and closes it by tertiary intention. Nothing you guys need to know, but it was just good to come back to that. And he says, customer service sucks. I got a chuckle thinking about it. You telling the story of how you, they let you go. Yeah, they did. They let us go because it was a nationwide downsizing. It was a good company. I loved it. I got to, you know, I was a medical device sales rep which was a pretty good job after getting out of the army as a medic. 
And I got to go around and go to the different uh, surgery centers and teach doctors and nurses and uh, wound care clinics how to use this device. Fun, fun times. Anyhow, back to crypto. Oh, post a bail with customers' funds. Talking about Alex Mashinsky, yeah. Good question. ICP and near price target. I got to tell you, uh, Insane Clown Posse is, no, I'm just kidding. So Internet Computer Protocol. Let's take a look. That's another one that uh, I've invested into a little bit here and there. This one did, it was one of those big monsters when it first launched. But as I understand it, it was kind of a competitor to Solana and SPF and the crew kind of 86 that and they uh, had some, did some behind the scenes things. I've just heard stories. It's all hearsay, so I can't really elaborate. But yeah, look at this. Look at this. 461. Now it's at three bucks. Wow, it's nothing. $18 now in the last, last month. Not too bad. Last three months, pretty good. So price predictions, let's see. I'm going to say by the end of 2024, Internet Computer Protocol will be between the price of 50 cents and $750, somewhere between there, pretty sure. And then near, let's see, which, hey, good news, I'm going to have uh, the, the co-founder of near on, uh, Ilya Kalushkin. I think that's how you say his last name. Uh, he's he's going to have a sit down today. A matter of fact, with Vitalik Buterin over at uh, the uh, I think it's Dev Asia uh, conference, and he'll be on. We're going to talk about chain abstraction and the things that are going on. Dark shard, dark sharding, dank sharding, hmm. and go from there. Ah, I know what that was. So let's see here. Near's doing great. Let's max out though. It's still pretty pretty good. Uh, so let's see, $7, the high was 20. Let's say it's going to be somewhere between 50 cents and $750. Same as ICP. I don't know. I don't know where it is. Um, no idea, but I know they're going to do well. I'm glad I hold them. Oh, that's a good one. Let's just go with Sapien Scorpion. Price starts for ICP 223 for near 46. Hey, why not? Illuvium down 4.5% today. Probably because they knew that Kieran was going to be on the show. And they're like, you know what? Let's give Digital Asset News and all of his uh, watchers the opportunity to think about getting in at a cheaper price of 4.5% less as a discount. Thank you, everybody who sold their near or sold their Illuvium. Yeah, John's right. Near's gonna gonna go past fifty cents. I gotta agree. Jeff says thanks. I got a near at one seventy six. One of my reasonable calls. Not that I've nailed them all, that's for sure. But uh, I think just over the long term, people do pretty well, as long as you don't leave anything in exchanges like I don't know, like a Voyager or a Celsius. Who would recommend that? Yeah, from now on. Cold storage is the only way to go for me, which would remind me a couple of things. Uh, if you're looking for a cold, cold storage wallet, like I use Tangent, I also use Ledger. People like Trezor. Just pick one and, and use it. Tangent's got to be the easiest. Oh, and I just saw that they updated their roadmap, and it looks like in Q2 they're going to have native staking for a whole host of, of cryptos, which is pretty great because that was one of the biggest knocks I would kind of... A, it was an irritant for me. Like a, I'd like to stake like I could with Ledger as far as native staking, but uh, I couldn't do it because Tangent doesn't, didn't offer that. But I just saw this right here. This was from today. So the roadmap for, for Tangem is in April, they're going to add in, and they've already got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different uh, cryptos that you can put on on the device. Radiant, Nexa, Moonbeam, Manta, Moon River. All right. Hey, playable. I have a node over there. ZK EVM, Polygon, ZK Sync, Mantle, Flare, Taraxa, and some other ones. Then in May, ICP. 
Hey, nice. Joystream, say, BitTensor, another good AI play. Dynex, Coinos, and then right here, uh, staking's going to be Solana, Cosmos, Polkadot, Polygon, Cardano. Awesome. Avalanche, Tron, Binance, Near. Woo, I'm going to make a ton of money. Tezos, Kronos, Gava, additional and future. That's great because I like it just locked in on the cold storage device. I don't have to transfer it or, or have it on a on a, on a a hot wallet, but then connect it to my tangent wallet. That's not the whole point of cold storage. I don't like to do that at all. Not a big fan. So that's good. I'm pretty happy about that. And of course, if you're looking for the tangent wallet, first watch the video. There's a link in the description. And then if you want to buy it, there's a 10% affiliate link. Just know, if you use that affiliate link, I get a kickback. But if you can't stand using affiliate links, don't use it. Just go right to Tangem and buy that, that card. You don't get the 10% off, but you proved a point. All right. Sorry. Ah, J2 Day, we are bargain shoppers. I have to agree. Thomas says, thank you, Rob. Any thoughts on staking TRX and Charlie Network? I'm not familiar with that one. Um, how that works out, I can, really can't tell you. Uh, Tron, I know some people give it a lot of a lot of hard knocks, but uh, I think it's still in the top 30, correct? It's been around for longer than most that are out there. So we'll see if it can make it. <laughs> Gross. Rob gets kicked back in Mofongo. If you guys don't know what Mofongo is, come to Puerto Rico. Nothing but Mofongo everywhere. I'm not a fan. Alex R says, it's only hot if you keep it connected. I know, but there is a there is a connection there I just don't want to deal with. That's all. <laughs> Plus it says, SPF sends the 25 years. Exactly. Yes, sir. Yeah. Jeff says, those 10% tangent discounts really add up when buying for a handful. Yeah, like I got, I bought, uh, matter of fact, for my kids this, this Christmas. Gave them all tangents. I'm sure they were very happy with that. Oh, I just found out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, no big deal. I mean, that just happened. It could have been 50 years. It could have been four to six, but they gave him 50. My question is, you know, with good behavior, when does he get paroled? It's got to be a couple of years. It's got to be at least five, right? Hmm. Thomas says, hey, Thomas says, I'm moving from Cali to Puerto Rico next week. Oh, you're going to like, just so you know, Puerto Rico is expensive. It's not, I don't think it's as expensive as, as California. I mean, but it's, it's pricey. So Thomas, I'm hoping that you've already been here and you've already checked it out. And yeah, connections. We always do uh, meetups every couple of weeks. So just uh, pay attention over. I announce it here. Or usually I'll do it over on X. So yeah. And if you're looking for like CPAs and real estate agents and things to help you with the Act 60 and lawyers, there is a, a video I put out. If you just search for Digital Asset News Puerto Rico, it's the first one that comes up. It's a, a one-year update video. It has all the links that you possibly could need to get everything started. Oh, yeah, I know that. Big Bad says if it's federal, you're supposed to do at least 85%. Oof. But also, you can still appeal, right? Because if you appeal, and then you come back a couple years later, like, okay, well, it's not such a high-profile case now. Maybe we can knock this down a little bit. That would be it. <laughs> Master Blaster. Puerto Rico is nothing but a tax bomb. Ready to go off once Congress writes some ridiculous new laws incorporating it. I've heard that since I moved here. And the people that I that I met when I got here, who've been here like a decade or longer, said the exact same thing. So first of all, Congress, you have to understand that Congress is not competent and they can't move fast. And everything that they try to do, it's like, we're gonna do a resolution, we're gonna bring this, bring this to the floor, and then somebody will will knock it, then and they'll some will poo-poo all over it, and then it won't get passed, and that's it. It doesn't even make out a committee. So, I mean, if it does, it does just how it is, but I'm, I'll still live here. It's great. 
like today, I'm probably going to probably hit the beach. John says, uh, tennis courts in federal prison. Pretty nice. Mike says, when are you going back to El Paso? Uh, I think May or June, somewhere around there. Not in any rush. Except for the food. Food is great over there. Uh, but El Paso is great. We lived there for two decades. <laughs> Every tax advantage is good until it isn't. That's true. All right, everybody. So I think we answered all the questions. That's good. A lot of things going on. And um, check out that the NFA Live video we did. It was good over on Ben's channel. Real good information. I liked it. But um, there is links in the description I'd like you guys to definitely take a peek at. First of all, if you want to take more of an insight into Alluvium and the staking and all that, there's, there's the website. The Bitcoin L2s, which there's a ton of L2s that you can get information on. It is all right there. Uh, let's see. And then one more, Velar Bitcoin L2, which I think is a DEX information there. The Aether, uh, the D-Pin AI video, which that token, the node cell is going on now. Um, but just to describe how it is, yeah, watch that video. The token itself will be launching sometime in Q2, as I believe it might be in early as May. Yeah, so check those out. And then uh, any kind of other stuff you're looking for is uh, in the description. That's it for today. So everybody, thanks so much for stopping by. I appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of your day, and I will see you guys on the next one. Have a great, uh, have a great day.